Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, Bema, the Judgment Seat of Christ. What happens to believers after the rapture? And absolutely, folks, we see that day approach, and we know Jesus is coming. We know the appointed time is upon us. We don't know exactly when that is. We simply see that day approaching. But I wanted to remind everybody that while we're still here, we have a job to do. We have a whole world out there right now that's lost. And we're ambassadors for Christ. We're soldiers for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And while we're still here, while we still have breath in our lungs, we play a role, guys, each one of us. And that's why I wanted to talk today about the Bema, about the judgment seat of Christ. Now, I wanted to make something very clear again right off the bat. We're not saved by our works, and we are not kept saved by our works. But all of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, or the Bema, it is not to punish believers your sin debt was paid in full on that cross at Calvary by Jesus Christ. But the judgment seat of Christ is, so it's not meant to punish believers, but to reward believers for their faithful service. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10 makes it very clear. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we're not saved by our works, and we're not kept saved by our works, but we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So I wanted to encourage you guys today that, again, not the, no amount of works we do can earn our salvation, and no amount of works can keep us saved, our sin debt was paid in full on that cross at Calvary by Jesus Christ. However, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You know, he's called you for such a time as this. And we need to use the time we have left. We have to occupy and redeem the time. Yes, we need to live each day as if the trumpet of God could sound today and Jesus Christ, Christ comes to rapture his church. All right? But also we need to occupy again and redeem the time. And get busy planting seeds and giving people the gospel of their salvation. And telling them that they can be saved right here and right now. We need to tell them that Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that's going to save them. And again, give them the gospel of their salvation. Which is Jesus Christ died on that cross for their sins. He was buried. And he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. But, you know, I was just thinking the other day. You know, I grew up playing ice hockey, and I played college ice hockey at Penn State University. I was the captain there. You know, I was part of the team, and nothing ever changed that. But I always wanted to be the best for the team. You know, I was the captain. I wanted to lead the team, and I always wanted to win. Again, nothing I ever would do would make me not part of the team. I was always part of the team, but I wanted to be the best for the team. Likewise, we're all a team. If you're saved... You're all, you're part of the body of Christ. But guys, let's strive. Like the Apostle Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. You know, in Titus 2, 13 to 14, you know, this is the scripture talking about the blessed hope where um, the Apostle Paul says, you know, looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then in verse 14 of Titus 2, he says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Folks, if you're saved, you're an ambassador for Christ. He's chosen you to be a soldier. 
It reminds me of what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him that has cho hath chosen him to be a soldier. And in 2 Corinthians 5.20, the Apostle Paul says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. You're a soldier for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're an ambassador for Christ. We have to remember who we represent. So again, although we're not saved by our works and we're not kept saved by our works, again, Jesus Christ paid our sin debt in full on that cross at Calvary, all right? He's chosen you. He's called you for such a time as this. His soldier, his ambassador for Christ. And folks, we need to use the time, whatever time we have left, more effectively and get busy planting seeds. But that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, the bima. What, the bima, the judgment seat. What is the judgment seat? Well, the Bible speaks of a special judgment that God, special judgment that God will hold for believers only. It is known as the judgment seat of Christ or the judgment seat of God. So do you want to know what happens to believers after the rapture? We're all going to stand before the judgment seat, the bima. Uh, the judgment seat, it, it translates, it's known as the bima. So the word is translated court or tribunal. So the bima is a tribunal for rewards. In the large Olympic arenas, there was an elevated seat on which the judge of the contest sat. After the contests were over, the successful competitors would assemble before the bima to receive their rewards or crowns. The bima was not a judi judicial bench where someone was condemned. It was a reward seat. Likewise, the judgment seat of Christ is not a judicial bench. The Christian life is a race, and the divine umpire is Jesus Christ. After the race is over for each believer, he will gather ever, every member before the bima for the purpose of examining each one and giving the proper reward to each. There are two accounts of a final judgment in the Bible pertaining to every human being that ever lived. One for the, um, uh, one for the believer, those that are saved, um, and one for the unbeliever who rejected the Son of God. The judgment seat of Christ, also referred to again as the Bema seat, is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he, him, he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Gold, silver, and costly stones refer to works done for the glory of God, with the right motive and in dependence upon the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bema Seat judgment does not determine salvation. Rather, it is when believers must give an account of their lives to Christ and whose salvation has already been secured by faith in Jesus Christ. We should not focus on the Bema Seat as, as Christ judging our sins, but rather as God re rewarding us according to how we lived our lives. So again, the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, is not to punish believers, but to reward them for their faithful service. In Romans 14, 10 to 12, the Apostle Paul says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, the Apostle Paul gives the Corinthian church an illustration of the Bema seat when he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to the, that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Paul is teaching us that all Christians will stand before the Bema seat of Christ. There, believers will be rewarded according to how faithfully they served, obeyed, and followed Christ. 
The Bible mentions Christians receiving crowns for various aspects of the Christian life. So let's talk about five of these Christian crowns. Okay? The first one I want to go over is um, found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, which is the crown of righteousness, the crown for loving his appearing. So 2 Timothy 4, 8 makes it very clear. If you're longing for his appearing, if you're loving his glorious appearing, you're going to receive the crown of righteousness. Next, I want to read about the crown of life, which you can find in James chapter 1, verse 12. This crown is given for enduring testings, trials, and temptations, and overcoming them. There are three more crowns described in the Bible. In response, believers will cast their crowns before the Lord's throne, saying, You are worthy, our Lord our, and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. That's Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Let's talk about the next crown, the crown of glory. In 2 Peter chapter 5, sorry, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, uh, we read about the crown of glory. This crown is a reward promised to elders for faithfulness in the discharge of their responsibilities in shepherding the people. Next, we have the incorruptible crown, which you can read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. This is a crown that's given for faithful, faithfulness in running the race and exercising self-control in order to serve the Lord and finish the race. And finally, we have the crown of rejoicing, which you can find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. This crown is a reward for witnessing, follow-up, and ministry to others. This is also known as the soul winner's crown. Wow. It is very important not to confuse the Bema seat with the great, great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment is a trial set in the future after the millennium for all people who have, who have rejected God's call to salvation. Every person who has lived upon earth and has refused to accept God's way to redemption from sin will stand before their creator at this time and acknowledge that he is God, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Here you can read Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. At the great white throne is where those who have died as unbelievers are judged and condemned. Each will then be cast into the lake of fire, which will be their place of torment, throughout eternity. The Bible clearly presents two options for eternity. Therefore, we need to remember that we are only a heartbeat away from our choice becoming a reality. In Revelation 22, 12, Jesus Christ declares, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. But guys, I wanted to encourage you with this today. Again, the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, is not to punish believers but to reward them for their faithful service. Again, Jesus Christ took our sin debt on, him, on himself on that cross at Calvary, paying our sin debt in full. Again, the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, is not to punish believers, but to reward them for their faithful service. I just wanted to encourage you with this. Again, go read through those five crowns. I have the scripture reference in there. Just go through the video, um, and you can read through, again, the crowns. And again, we have a job to do. We're soldiers. We're ambassadors for Christ, folks. Our job is to give people the gospel of their salvation. Again, telling them 
that Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and he's the only name that's going to save them and give them the gospel of their salvation, which the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, and tell people that now is the accepted time. Now is a day of salvation. But right now they, they need to put their faith and their trust in the blood of Jesus. Believing Jesus Christ died on that cross for their sins. He was buried and he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. I wanted to encourage you with this video today. Because after the rapture of the church, we are all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, if, if you're a believer, and you're saved, you're going to heaven. Again, this isn't the Bema is not to punish you, but it's to reward you for your faithful service. I don't know about you, but those words I want to hear are well done, good and faithful service. Good and faithful servant. I want to be able to lay those crowns down at my king because he deserves all praise, honor, and glory. Again, our works don't save us, and there's nothing, no amount of works we do to keep ourselves saved. But we love him because he first loved us. God bless each and every one of you. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming, and he's coming quickly. God bless you all.